guys. Hey, David. What's up, Jamie? How you doing? Hey, everybody. So in one of your previous videos, JP recommended that you should try the Booker's Tagalong batch, which I've never even had either. I haven't even opened this bottle. So I'm kind of excited to get this thing open and try it myself. And uh, what better bottle to pair against a Booker's 2021-02 Tagalong batch than Knob Creek 12 cast strength. This thing is fantastic. Now, both bottles range right around 100 bucks. This is 90, this is 104. This one's super limited, but part of a regular series that comes out. This one is pretty hard to find as well. So um, these aren't necessarily super easy, but they're also not like Crazy Buffalo Trace difficult to find. Yeah, I'm kind of excited after I liked the Bookers before. A little high on proof, but I managed it, so. Now, I can't get it open, so we're gonna have to not have the competition tonight. We're gonna have to find different bottles. Whatever, get this open, David. Do do I need to intervene here? Okay, Booker's Jim, <laughs> Jim Beam. Okay, everybody down at Jim Beam. All you guys that are doing quality control, doing bottle designs and everything else. Okay, I want you guys to take a field trip and go over to Maker's Mark. And then I want you to see, I want you to go over to the gift shop where they have the wax. David. And I want you to look at the wax and be like, damn, we should make wax like that that doesn't break into a thousand pieces all over everything when we open it up. We could just have a nice Maker's Mark wax. It's nice and soft and peels off so beautifully. Instead, we get crumbly black bits all over the speakeasy. Cut. Oh my gosh, so ridiculous. Are you going to behave yourself? Yes. I just had a complaint and I had to voice it. This is not Whiskey Row. This is the Happy Channel. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you that are not familiar with this Booker's, they do four of them a year. Uh, this is the Tagalong Batch. Uh, that's the name of it. It comes in at 127.9 proof. It is six years and five months and zero days. And the Knob Creek comes in at 124.3 proof. Limited release. Again, these are both, you know, somewhat hard to find and uh, not impossible though, not not crazy. And I'm excited to try them. So this yeah. one, this one is literally almost exactly two years or twice as old as the Booker's. So in theory, this should have much more oakiness and like probably older a little notes. more sweeter because this one we just opened too. So Jamie, do you have a prediction of which do you think you'll like better? I kind of feel like only because I'm still new to the bookers, I feel like Knob Creek, since it is, has been opened, it's been aged a lot longer. I think it's going to be Knob Creek for me. So I think it's going to be Knob Creek for me as well. Yeah. So I, I you know. Well, you haven't tasted this one yet. I haven't had this one, but just, of... I've had, you know, four or five other bookers, five or six other bookers in the past. And, and generally, I really like Knob Creek 12. So After I get through that really harsh proof, there's a light bit of sweetness. Yeah. Oh, like a honey buttercream. I'm getting a buttercream. I do get that. I'm getting a little bit of an oakiness, some char, a lot of proof. A lot of proof. A very faint kind of roasted like almond. Oh, with a little bit of vanilla. I do get some <sighs> vanilla. You want to try it? Swirl it up a little bit. Because if that's the Booker's, then... Yeah. Oh, roasted almond proof. Proof, roasted almonds, lots, a little bit of spice. A little bit of vanilla. A little bit of vanilla. I get the buttercream. Ooh, Ooh that's the first bourbon of the day for us. The, the finish is very buttery. It's, yes. You can definitely tell it's, it's, it's a more expensive bourbon because mm -hmm. it is, it's coat in my mouth. It's, I gotta say, I don't like the, the, the first sip of it. It's kind of a little bit of a sour. Like a barrel oak sour at first for me. But it finishes really well. Ooh. Goes to a, 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 a good, it goes to a good roasted nut. Starting to get a little more peanut on it from, than it did before. That's a big proof punch. <laughs> that is a big proof punch right in the face. Yeah, it is. That thing is some... Right in the some, mouth. Some spicy, saucy... Ooh, but it ends really well, though. The last Booker's, I had the same reaction. Where it was like, pow, here's the proof... And then it slowly um, ended a little sweeter. I'm not getting some of the age notes that I normally would associate with Knob Creek 12. So you might be right on that. It's pretty good. I just got it's a little bit a, of a berry. Really? Right in the middle before the finish. It's a, it's kind of a thin mouthfeel. Yeah. For e e Even with the proof being as high as it is. Uh, hopefully this isn't the Knob Creek because of what I'm about to say. But <laughs> for a 90 dollar 125 proof bourbon whichever one this is 
it's kind of got a thin mouthfeel. I would have expected more. Yeah. It's got good flavor, good sweetness, good balance, good... It's good experience overall, but just a little thin on the... There's no cleanliness to it. See, I feel like at the end, I still have... Like, I'm still tasting it right now. The finish is long. Yeah. But you know how some of the bourbons, like, you get that kind of, like... Cody. Cody, yeah, thick, the syrupy. Richness. And I'm not getting that. It just, it's just got good flavors, and it tastes good, and it, the good finish is long. Even though I don't love it. Yeah, I don't love it, but I appreciate the, the finish. Well, you know, the funny thing, Jamie... Is that both of these are from Jim Beam? Ah, oh, they're both actually okay. Jim Beam props. I just when I put it together, I didn't even think about it. But we're can you know if you're buying an expensive Jim Beam, which should you get? Maybe we should title the video that "Best of Jim Beam." Dun dun dun. All right, on to the next one. This one's definitely a lot easier on the nose. Yeah, this one tastes smells sweeter too. I'm getting a little bit of a barrel oak, some char, a little bit of pepper. A little bit of black pepper, yeah. On the sweet side, again, I'm getting a little kind of a faint nut, faint roasted nut. Do you get a little bit of a lemon? Um, I think I do get that citrusy. A little of a citrus. Lemon, lemon, lemon like, um, what are those leaves? Um, basil leaves or something? Oh, the. Um, like a lemon basil. Lemon basil stuff. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I can't get past any of the this to get to any kind of like sweetness. I'm having trouble. I'm getting a kind of a, 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 a on this one I'm getting kind of a a caramel caramel, but, caramel buttercream. <laughs> we both just said it at the same time. We did. Yeah. Very oaky at the front. Ooh. I feel like I bit into an almond and then it just burst of like sweetness Whoa. with like vanilla. Oh, so good. Caramel, buttercream. Yeah. Oh. You get a spice punch up front, probably from the proof, maybe a little bit of spice as well. You get a little bit of oak, and then all of these sweet flavors come. And yeah. it's really good. Oh. And it's lasting. It's Cody. Oh, that finish. Buttercream. Because this smells richer and deeper and longer. This smells fresher, newer. I honestly felt feel like if we left the bookers open and came back in a while it may taste very similar to the it might freak. but i don't know that if it's it's going to develop that mouth feel gotcha. i think that 12 year knob creek you know you get that thicker that kind of more dense mouth feel that just kind of comes with age i think sometimes it just tastes that this one just it tastes younger mm -hmm. it really does yeah and obviously overcoming a, you know I, I'm I'm pretty confident in saying that this is probably the Booker's. Do you want to just look? Yeah. Let's, let's just look. Yeah. yeah. Bookers. Okay. <laughs> Wait, both of mine say Booker's. <laughs> no, they don't. Shut up. So, yeah, I mean, at this point, yeah, we can confidently, well, we looked at the bottom, so we can confidently say that this one's Booker's. And it's pretty obvious from a palate perspective. Mm. When you put this six-year and nine-month against a 12-year and... Are you wanting to take mine? I just... Well, maybe I will because... At least even it out. We film later. All right. So I'm drinking the Knob, Knob Creek 12-year. And I she poured all the bookers in mine. So not that I don't like both of them. I it's like bad. both of them. But I will say the proof is pretty hard to get past. They're not easy sippers. No, but I will say there is a difference with the proof of the Knob Creek versus the bookers there's only three proof point difference only a what 1.5 percent alcohol apv difference but on the palate it's drastic yeah it is the drastic. bookers you taste all 127 proof on the the knob creek 12 it comes to me more like at 115 proof it's, it's pretty on par with like a barstown discovery proof wise or something else in that you know mid uh, like a uh a wild turkey rare breed. However, the Knob Creek, I think, is always going to be a a, a more balanced, um, easy sipping, where all the flavor knobs are turned to the right levels. It's always going to be a little yeah. bit more balanced. Just because of that age, it's had a chance to really mellow everything and balance it all out. Yeah. Knob Creek great. 12 wins. All right, David. So what did you learn today? Uh, today, <laughs> I learned that even though I like to buy Booker's and I always am a sucker and buy them at 90 bucks for a six-year bourbon, I don't know why I do it, but I do anyway. 
it's the box, it's the tags, it's the collectibles, whatever. I, I fall for it every freaking time. I mean, you do have a lot of bookers that are I have not. So un- many bookers that I, that I don't even have open. <laughs> and and part of that is a testament to they're just not as good as other things in the same price category. If I could have a Knob Creek 12 calf strength or even a Knob Creek 1200 proof, I they taste better to me than the bookers. Uh, mm-hmm. The bookers are an experience. If you're looking for a high proof bourbon, yeah. you know, check out the. Uh, the bookers, if if that's if you're so inclined, you want a high proof Jim Beam product. I don't think they're disappointing at all. It's not disappointing, uh, just it, for the price. You know, if I if these are similarly priced, and you can get a Knob Creek 1200 proof for cheaper than the bookers by what 20 bucks, right. and it's going to taste better. So it's not going to be as high proof, but um, you know, we we almost put uh, an Elijah Craig barrel proof in this against the bookers, and that would have been interesting competition just to switch up distilleries. But even still, I think the Elijah Craig barrel proofs have the ability to beat the bookers. Well, and I think to give bookers a few months to open up a little bit for this bottle and, you know, revisit it to see how. Let's do it. It does. Yeah. Set, a, set a date on the calendar, Jamie. We'll come back. We'll pull this thing out. We'll put it up against an Elijah Craig barrel proof. Yeah. See how it does. If you like what you're seeing on Beyond the Row, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. Go check me out on uh, Whiskey Row if you have uh, want to watch more content with me in it. And sometimes Jamie. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Jamie. Let me do... David. Oh, I'm going to do you a favor and I'm going to swirl yours around. Thank you, Jamie. Give us some swirl action. It needs to open up. It's, I can already smell some really good flavors, some sweetness coming out. Some good smells. Yeah. But when you're moving them. I know, I know. I got this scared because then you started overanalyzing everything. Let's do it, Jamie. I'm ready. Yeah.